Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you are having a nice winter or holiday break if you have one. My name is Camilla, I'm 26 years old and I'm a second year medical student in the United States. I go to an osteopathic medical school and I'm excited because I think I have my schedule down December through May on how I'm planned to study for the complex and step. So a little bit of background to that, since I go to an osteopathic medical school, I am required to take Comlex, which is the osteopathic boards in order to pass and be able to start rotations. In addition, I am also going to be taking step one because I want to be a competitive applicant. And if you want to apply for competitive specialties, um, it is generally recommended that you do take both. I also want to say thank you to everybody who responded to my last video, who helped me brainstorm schedules, sent me ideas, sent me recommendations. I really appreciate it. It really helped me out a lot and saved me a lot of stress. So uh, I'm excited to share what I put together. I'm also going to leave the Q&A uh, for the end of the video. So the beginning of the video is all just going to be about the schedule and the end of it is going to be the q and I'm going to try to keep it as brief and efficient and clear as I can. So stick with me. Let's do this. Starting with um, December and my pre-dedicated schedule. So, so my study period is going to be broken down into pre-dedicated and dedicated. Pre-dedicated is going to be December until the end of April, and then dedicated is about a month, end of April to end of May when I take the exam. So looking at my study schedule for December and my pre-dedicated period, what my plan has been is to do 10 year old questions, then I review those questions and I make new Anki cards for the things that I missed. I do my old Anki reviews, which has been about 500 to 700 cards. And then I do an immuno video because my plan is to finish all of immuno in December or reviewing all of immuno. Then I do those Anki cards. And then if time permits, because I also don't want to burn myself out over winter break, I also want to do a farm video and Anki or a biochem video and Anki. So for my pre-dedicated period, I wanted to get through all of immuno and all of biochem. And for that, I was going to use boards and beyond for both. By the end of my pre-dedicated period, so by the end of April, I want to be able to finish all of Sketchy Micro, all of Sketchy Farm, Physio, Pathoma, Boards and Beyond Immuno, Boards and Beyond Biochem, and then if time permits, I said I also want to do a pass through all of Sketchy Path because pathology is so heavy on um, the step and complex. I also want to say thank you to Protoarc. They were so nice enough to send me a mouse and it comes with this little hub. All you have to do is plug it into your computer, turn on the mouse in the back, and it works right away. My Surface doesn't have a USB port, it only has this. I don't know if this is called USB-C, but my computer only has this. The fact that it comes with this and the three ports is really nice. It's very comfortable. I like its sleek, nice design. This plugs in and immediately offers me three new connections for anything else that I want to plug in, like my phone, charge my Anki controller. Super useful, super easy to use. This was such a nice gift. Thank you again so much to ProtoArc for sending me me the hub mouse. I will put a link in the description box for it. If you guys are in need for a clean, simple to use mouse, then check out ProtoArc and their hub mouse. So in the pre-dedicated period, when I do my 10 questions a day, this is where I keep track of it. Haven't been doing super great at staying on top of it so far, but I just do 10 questions from a certain topic. I log what percentage I got correct. This is where I write down the content that I missed to make um, Anki cards out of it so that I could review these Anki cards every day as well. And then I have the same tab for True Learn questions. Also on that, our school provides us with TrueLearn as the free question bank. Um, and I bought UWorld because I heard from everybody that UWorld is like the gold standard. And so I have these two question banks. I've seen other people buy um, UWorld and Amboss, but because this, because our school provided TrueLearn as the free resource, I didn't want to waste it. So I have these two question banks to work with. So then as an overview, this is the breakdown for step one. And then this is the breakdown for Comlex one. This part is broken down by systems and this is the general disciplines. For Comlex, you have the OPP, the osteopathic principles um, and practice, and then you have OMM, which is the osteopathic manipulative medicine, so all parts of um, getting your DO degree, and then here at the bottom you have your systems as well, um, and the percentages for each. So I'm using these percentages and breakdowns to guide my studying, to guide which topic I give more time to and which one I give less time to. So now looking at my calendar, this is directly out of my planner I took pictures of. In red are going to be my regular medical knowledge exams. 
and in blue are my clinical skills exams. So in red you have renal, GI, endocrine, MSK. These are all the new content that I'm still going to be learning and I'm still going to be tested on. Clinical skills are all my patient encounters, my OMM exams, my physical exams, stuff like that. Then in green I have my COMAT and my COMSE. just a shorter version and it's going to be a good place for me to see where my baseline is at. It's going to show me all the disciplines that I'm weak at and that I'm strong at and then I'm going to be able to continue to tailor my studying based on that. So that's January 10th. February 21st, I have my COMSE. This is where they expect a certain score as a baseline, and um, that's a score that they want to see for to know that you're on track. March, we have another COMSE. They expect your score to go up even more at this point. And April is where a dedicated period starts, April 22nd. From here, we have three more COMSEs that the school provides for us that we can take at any point in April during our dedicated period. Dedicated period goes through May and um, I scheduled to take Comlex on the 31st of May. I'm hoping to take step one a week before Comlex, so somewhere in this period. So then I'll just freshen my mind so I can take one and then study a little bit more specifically with the OMM and OPP for the Comlex exam and then take that. And then yeah, hopefully be done with everything by the end of May. And then last thing I wanted to show you guys is a more specific dedicated schedule. This was a schedule that my friend sent me. It was a beautiful Excel doc that had everything laid out so nicely. So I used it as the foundation to break up my study schedule and tailor it to my curriculum and learning and all that jazz. So this is going to be a rough estimate because with dedicated being so far away, I don't know how much content I'm gonna gonna cover. I don't know if I'm going to get through reviewing like all the immuno and biochem, all the old stuff. So just depending on how I feel getting closer dedicated, I will be tailoring the schedule more. This is just a rough draft, but we have 39 days of dedicated. So my day is gonna be divided into three blocks. Wake up around nine, not a morning person, but I'm gonna try to wake up earlier than what I usually do and go to bed earlier than three in the morning. After lunch, I'm going to review that question set, make new Anki cards, um, really go through the content, see what I got wrong, continue doing my old Anki reviews, and then I'm also going to be adding a couple true learn questions specifically focused on the OMM and the OPP. And I'll probably be adding more and more true learn questions to this just as long as I'm not getting burnt out doing like 80 questions a day or something. After dinner, it gets a little sketchy because I'm running out of time at this point, but I'm definitely saving time for the gym because it keeps me sane. And then I have a little bit of time left in my evening block to kind of finish up what I have for the day. We'll see how that goes. That needs to be adjusted a little bit, but we'll see. One of the things that I want to mention is everybody told me to save. So the COMAT is going to be a four hour exam. It's on January 10th and it's supposed to be representative of the actual COMLEX exam. First three Pathoma chapters for like closer to dedicated because they are apparently heavily tested and they're like, everyone keeps saying they're like pure gold. So I saved them for the beginning of dedicated. I'll get through them in the beginning and then I'll have that content fresher in my mind as I go through the rest of dedicated and keep working through those Anki cards. We get to the end, somewhere in here is going to be my USMLE exam and then I take the Comlex and then we're done. So yeah, hopefully I'll be done with everything by the end of May. Hopefully that was clear. I tried to go through everything pretty fast and also trying to be thorough and just showing my what my school schedule looks like, what my study schedule will hopefully look like. Hopefully I can stick to it. I know people say that no matter how hard you try, everybody falls behind because it's just hard to keep a perfect schedule, especially with school and new content still going on. And hopefully you guys can keep me accountable as well because I'm gonna continue vlogging all the studying that I'll be doing up until the exam. I know I'm going to be tailoring this as I go, as new content gets added, as I take my exam, as I take all my clinical skills exams, like potentially my days are gonna get changed, but you'll get to see it in the vlogs as I go through it live. Let me know if you have any comments or suggestions or questions. I'm open to hearing any suggestions, anything you think that would work better. And any questions that you guys have, maybe some details that I left out or something. Thank you again to everybody who helped me put this together. You guys are the best and you saved me a lot of stress and I really appreciate all the support. So now that we're done with that, let's go to the Q&A.
So I'm going to jump straight to the questions. I asked you guys to ask me some questions. Never really done a Q&A before, but I always found this fun to watch. First question, do you regret switching to medicine? So as background, I was a finance major. I was originally on a pre-law track. For most of my life, I thought I was going to become a criminal defense lawyer. That was like my dream and that ran in the family. And um, after college, I decided that I wanted to pursue medicine. So do I regret switching? No, I've been loving, like as hard as it has been, and it has been really hard. I keep saying going to medical school is the hardest thing that I've ever done in my life but I don't regret switching at all I can tell that I'm now in the right field like I feel very at home I love everything I'm learning I'm so excited for what the future holds and I don't think I would have been this happy if I was in either finance or in law I do maybe wish that I had spent like a year working at a finance company or something just to kind of see what that life was like. Overall, no, I don't regret switching to medicine. What would you have done if not for medicine? So it's kind of similar. So I don't know if I would have followed through and gone to law school. I don't know if I would have decided to take the business route and stay in like the finance and business realm. Also, I've had a lot of friends who went down the healthcare consulting path, which would have been a combination of medicine and business for me. So that could have been a good middle ground. I don't know, maybe one of those three. Any idea where you want to do residency? No, I'm kind of open to going anywhere. I think I do want to stay on the East Coast and I am leaning towards New York right now. Every time I go to New York, I have so much fun so I can see myself spending a couple of years there. What is your favorite subject? What specialty do you want to go into? Favorite subject? Cardiology. Anything cardio related I have loved. It has also been my best block year one, my best block year two, so I can tell that this is for me. And the specialty that I want to go into with that is cardiothoracic surgery as of right now. I just love the feeling of being in the OR and working with my hands and being able to like physically get in there and fix a problem, kind of like mechanically fix an issue and see it make a person feel better. So that's why I wanted to do surgery. I have shadowed on the cath lab and I can say I still love the open heart OR surgeries more. Why did you choose DO over MD? Full transparency, I only got into two programs and both of them were DO. So it's not like I really had a choice because I was ready to go into medical school and I wasn't going to wait another year and see if I got into an MD program. I did like what the DO mentality stood for. I like their thinking, I like the way they approach treating patients, how they want it to be holistic, not relying on like medications and like very definitive invasive treatments. So I was really excited when I got into a DO program because I felt like it aligned more with the way I wanted to treat patients. And this leads to the next question, what are the pros and cons to both? This is a really good question and I feel like there's a lot. First of all, as a DO, you're learning OMM, you're learning osteopathy. Do I align with everything that I learn about OMM and osteopathy? No, not always. Some of it is really interesting and I think very applicable. Other things, I'm just like, I don't know if this actually works. A con to that too is it takes a lot of time to study for that. You're studying all this additional content that MD students don't have to bother with at all. Sometimes I wonder what they do with all that extra time that they have that we spend on studying OMM and all these other things. You're basically studying like double the information and getting tested on double the things and you have to take a complex and step one. So if you're not really interested in doing OMM or OPP, that's definitely a con because it's double the work for something you don't really want to do. We do have a lot more practice with like patient encounters, with touching patients. I feel so comfortable palpating somebody's dysfunction and feeling their muscles and feeling the differences. And I feel like I have a lot more of like an astute understanding of what like tissue feels like. I don't want to sound insulting. You could just tell that they don't have as much experience and can't feel as much of a difference. They just don't have that extra practice that we have every single week. There's also the whole stigma about being a DO versus MD. Going into competitive specialties that can be a disadvantage because you're kind of looked down on more than your MD counterpart. I think the stigma is slowly going away and they're trying to even out the playing field, but the fact that they combined residencies to where MD residencies should only accept you with a complex, but everyone still says take step one because otherwise you're not a competitive applicant, that shows that the playing field is not even. I think my biggest qualm with it is just that how much time in the day and in the week it takes to study all the extra DO stuff, like all the OMM and OPP, and you get tested on it, and you have to take complex. So it just takes a lot of time away. In the end, I 
don't use OMM that much. I feel like I don't even use it really on my friends or family or anything like that. I don't know how applicable it's going to be to my future. If I do end up going to cardiothoracic surgery, I probably will not really be using it. So it's just investing a lot of time for something that I probably won't get a lot of use out of. And last thing is the book update. So I've been reading A Court of Thorns and Roses. Hopefully I said that right. Aquatar. I am like 200 pages in now, so basically almost halfway through the first book. It's been really nice, especially like during the winter time when it's like flurrying and just all gray outside. And I say that because I talk to my MD friends and I've been listening to fantasy playlists that I found on YouTube at the same time and it just like feels like I'm like transported into that world. So that's been really nice and like a great way to get away from the world of studying and board stuff. I think it's a little bit simple. There's not a lot of action going on in the chapters but i heard the second and third book are better so kind of thinking that maybe if i get through this first book i will enjoy the second and third books more but so far i like it it's been a fun read all right so that's it hopefully i got through everything in this video isn't abhorrently long i want to say thank you again for all your advice for all your questions and for all your support throughout it just always makes me happy to sit down and vlog or talk to you guys and it's been really fun to connect with a lot of you guys so i'm just very appreciative for all this i hope you guys have a happy holiday season and and a nice restful winter break if you are getting one. And then I will see you guys in January now once school starts back up.